morning. How is everyone? I hope you're doing great and I hope you're enjoying the picture of our next project on the screen. I am very excited about getting started on this project with you. It's called My Flower Garden and it was designed and, and made by Melanie Sloan and it is just fun and happy and I'm I'm really looking forward to getting started on this quilt with you. There's a little picture of it behind me as well in the distance. Um, I'd like to show you the fabrics we're going to be using in it because they are absolutely scrumptious. So I'm going to um, share some of that with you. Here's a, here's a few of them that are coming. Um, the backgrounds are just wonderful between these reds and, and a kind of a glowy pink. And there's, there's just, they just keep coming and they're beautiful. Um, cannot wait. The texture and the variety of, uh, you know, of the, of the prints on them are just absolutely fabulous. And these reds, um, as I'm laying them up here and just piling them up so you can see them, uh, we're going to just have so much fun choosing colors. I just want to keep touching them. We have this, this gorgeous background um, polka dot, which makes me very happy. I just think all quilts should have some um, polka dots in it because polka dots are just happy fabrics. Our background is this fabulous textured red. And I know that some of you have had some questions about well, red, won't it bleed? I, I would suggest very much that you um, wash this and use your um, ColorFast Synthropol, um, the Retain, and give it a good wash before we get started with reds. And so that eliminates that um, fear of it bleeding on through your quilt without. So that's, that's going to be my... Um, project this week is I'm going to get started before we we start with the quilt next week by washing the red fabric just to make sure that nothing bleeds and I can also let you know those things. Once we um, get started I am going to be working with the piecing the first three blocks on the first week. I This quilt, if you've gotten your kit and your pattern already, you've probably seen that it's it's got about six sections to it, so it's going to take us about six to eight weeks to work our way through. And so on the piecing, I'll give you tips and techniques again and walk you through putting this together. As far as the quilt is concerned, it's it's not overly difficult. If if you're a beginning quilter, you most certainly can do this quilt. And for those who are advanced quilters, you can just have a lot of fun with it. And the other thing about this quilt is that the um, flowers that are in the pots going up the um, illusion of a staircase. What's really cool about that is that uh, she in the pattern gives you the the die cuts for a go machine. So if you have one of those that'll be um, helpful as well for you. And then there's all these beautiful beautiful um, fabrics for the flowers and the motifs that are in the pots and other things that are on that quilt. So if nothing, if nothing else, just the fact that you get to play and experience all this, these wonderful fabrics and beauty in this um, will be worth it um, for whatever. So hopefully you have purchased your kit, you've gotten your pattern, and we're getting close to being ready to go on this. I'm gonna going to move all of this out of the way. And so again, this is our next project. And I do hope that you will join us as we put together this delightful, happy quilt and uh, work on that together. So this is My Flower Garden by Melanie Sloan. All right. So today we are going to be um, working on something that really... It really isn't quilting, and I'm kind of excited about that. I want to share with you something that I learned from 
uh, a woman whose name is um, Sue uh, Rothamel Pickering. And I met her years ago at, of all places, a quilt show. And she, uh, when we lived in Michigan, she taught me a number of things about art and using fabric and paper together. And it was wonderful. And I, I just had a lot of fun with that and started incorporating things into my my quilts and especially my art quilts. And so I, I want to share this project with you. It's, it's pretty simple. And you may, if you watched uh, the show, the quilt show, uh, the show that I did with Alex, um, you might remember this. This is taking <clears throat> a, a motif from paper, and this was actually a, a, a um, napkin, and took this and took out the motif that I wanted. I painted a little bit on the background of the fabric just to add some highlights and some and you know just to give it some depth if you will so the background i painted with little bits of orange bird to umber and and um, yellow acrylic paint that had been um, liquefied with a little bit of water and a little bit of what is called perfect paper adhesive and it is from a company called U.S. Art Quest, which is which is Sue's company that she created. And it's just a wonderful. Um, it's called Perfect Paper Adhesive PPA, and it's it's an absolutely wonderful product. It is non-tacky. It's adhesive. It's um, UV, and it it adheres to all weights and textures of paper and lightweight materials and it goes on just about any surface but i you know mostly use it with fabric and um, i do put things on woods that kind of stuff but it's a wonderful product if you um, don't have that um, cannot find it or get it what's really really exciting to me is that the quilt show has a little small quilt that will come with some napkins and the glue and you can buy that little kit just as a practice it's small it's a good way to start to see if something like this could be anything that you would want to to incorporate into your quilt art life and so the the thing that I, I you know I've made these little little pieces that I find that are kind of fun and I use them for art on my in, on my walls when I have a little bit of space. But the other thing that I've used these for that has that has proven to be quite fun is that I will create strips to go in zippered bags. I will even use this whole technique for the outside of a bag. Um, I have done some some quilts. Um, here is from classes that I've done in the past. This is a little cow motif that um, I've put together and and worked and I you know I did this as a demonstration in a class. Here's another one and it's just pieces of nap these are napkin and tissue paper. A rice paper works really well uh, too um, for this and other lightweight. Um, papers of any kind will will work for it. So just to share with you how easy it is, I'm going to go through a couple of other things. I use acrylic paint and I tend to um, work with this. It's called Perfect Pigment and it's also from US Art Quest and it's quite lovely paint. It's it's simply acrylic but it's UV protected and it also is permanent. It's water-based paint and um, with all kinds of um, properties to it that are kind of really wonderful. And if you have any um, allergies or health conditions or anything, this is all organic. There, there is no chemicals in it whatsoever. So that's that's another reason why I really love it. If you have, you know, if you have issues with any of that, so basically you need a paintbrush. And if you're making a little bit larger motif, a sp these sponge um, brushes work really well. The, um, or just a regular um, 
paintbrush to put your your um, PPA down before you put your napkin. Then I like these a um, little bit wide, and they're very they're firm, so that when I am adhering the glue and the napkins together, I can get a, you know um, press down on those. And this one is also wide, and it's a very firm. And I these are just you know they're not expensive at all they're they're fairly cheap and because it is glue you need to have um, water nearby to put your brushes in so that your brushes aren't ruined you can also use um, like Mod Podge Elmer's glue things like that um, but one of the things that I notice about those glues is they become very hard and stiff whereas the PPA does not it it um, is very flexible if you if you note here this is this is a very flexible piece of fabric and so is this I mean you can scrunch it up and the more you mess with it the more you play with it the softer it gets um, as you work it so that's that's really a nice thing too and it also doesn't yellow and because of the UV protection it doesn't fade so let's get started so I found um, a napkin with just a simple motif on it. And if you um, are so inclined to, to do this project, it has a, um, in the kit, there's some, there's some really cute little napkins that you'll get in that kit. Now, the first thing that you need to do if you're using napkins is we need to remove this paper from the back. And so you would just simply um, pull it away and note that some of these have more than one layer of paper. Some are two and three. And what works really well is to take a piece of tape and get in there and that tape will help pull that um, fabric or that paper away. And now you're down to this, your, your final little motif or piece of paper. So I have just a, a, a piece of muslin and I am going to uh, take my a spray bottle with just water in it I'm gonna give you know that um, a, a quick so that you know the the glue and and the paper and everything uh, travels nicely for me now I don't want this square um, to show uh, really very much so I am going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to Put it in my water because I want that edge to, you know, to to not be a solid edge. So I'm using my paintbrush with water in it just to go around that edge. And I'll show you what's really nice about this is that I can pick out a motif and then this paper just slides away with the water. It makes it really fast, and I get that. A kind of a rough edge which I like much better than to have you know that that square um, edge and I can just pull that that paper then away and that way I'm not tearing anything that I don't want torn um, as far as my motif is concerned all right so this goes down I am going to put you know this on top and then I am going to mix um, my PPA so that I you know have plenty of that and I am going to put um, a water in that I'm just going to spritz some some water and stir that together a little bit and you can make this as um, as runny or as thick as you want it um, the th obviously the less water you use the thicker it's going to be and I work from the center and I move out so that I don't get the wrinkles and I don't tear my paper um, sometimes I will paint first I will paint my cloth on the back side and and I will as you saw with the um, pears I I work around that if you look on when I'm back on the screen I have a little angel I was working on 
um, and I painted clouds and sky in that um, fabric. And if you want the same consistency entirely across um, your fabric, you can go ahead and put all of this glue down first and get your whole fabric covered. Um, I do it both ways. I, I do it differently. It depends on what I'm using it for. If I were going to put this on the outside of a bag, I would have probably done the whole cloth first with water and PPA glue. And the other thing, you just want to make sure that you're getting glue all the way to the outside so that's on there. And so now you have um, your motif onto your fabric and then this is where sometimes I'll go in and I will add a little bit of paint so I, I just want to show you that I don't know that this is the you know the best choices right now so I'm using a little bit of, of yellow and titanium white because I don't want it in my face kind of thing and if you, you you think you'll ever want to wash this because you can wash this glue and it washes beautifully and it stays put. Um, I will use some textile medium um, with that paint. I'll use the glue. Um, I'll even add some of that in there from time to time. But the textile medium makes it permanent with the acrylic paint. So you can go back in then and um, very lightly, um, you know, touch, you know, touch up and, and paint over some areas. And I, I sometimes will, will like that to add that to it. Um, other times, maybe not so much. And so getting dark. And so you can add and add your own artistic touches. Um, to this as you go you have to be careful like I wasn't because your your um, napkin will sometimes um, but you can go in and just add some some highlights around it um, this is kind of the way that I added um, highlights on the angel um, by just you know tamping in between getting that you could do this before you put the napkin down and then it becomes um, the underneath of your napkin so there's there's different things that you can do to add um, to this whole process and um, you can do some layering so if, if you know that one like that you can just have one individual motif or you can take another um, piece of fabric and let's just kind of stick with this yellow and I'm going to take some of the glue and uh, I think I'm going to make this a little bit softer by adding you know some some water to it and getting it very thin and you could start by simply you know adding some background um, to your your fabric in the first place and if you if you wet it um, the the um, acrylic paint moves around very nicely on the fabric and you can get these this wonderful um, background of that to it and then you can start with putting putting down you know some possible flowers um, and using that glue again, working out from that, and and keep layering with whatever you have. And here's napkins I just you know tore um, away from something else, and just going ahead and keep layering that. And as you probably saw with the um, pear, I had found a word um, on a napkin, and this is from another you know piece of napkin. You can add a um, little bit of words um, to your to your work, um, you know whatever whatever you know you find in terms of paper. Um, you could even go to thin magazine uh, pictures, 
fine clip art and put it on you know thin paper that kind of thing just making sure that you get all the way to the edge of your paper and then you can you know you can just keep adding to um, your you know your motif and keep going and then what I what I do um, often so I'm going to move that out of the way because you saw how easy it is to get that down um, on the paper and let's go back let me get rid of this because it has some stuff on it on this one then I went back and did some shadowing with with thread and with some of the paint putting in veins um, again that was done um, with the thread and I you know I quilted it I layered it I put a backing on it um, this was in a napkin a different napkin and so I put the word you know there um, I don't remember what the word means but at the time I did and it had something to do with fruit and, and foliage and so there's there you can thread paint you can put beading on it you can uh, use the acrylic paints for to add or enhance what you have and it looks like you have you know your own art piece that's available uh, to you and again like I said I um, have used it actually in a quilt I have really thinned the glue down so it's very pliable and doable with um, animal um, prints there I found a series of napkins that had the cow you know that there was a little pig and the sheep and different things that could be really fun um, for a kids room for a picture for little wall hangings like this you could use them for zippered bags totes different kinds of things it's just another medium and it's been a lot of fun to try it and learn how to accomplish something a little different and um, doing a little bit different medium so you know to experiment to try different things uh, with your work the other uh, one of the women in one of my classes likes to do quilts that are art where she's traveled so she you know she uses pictorial quilting landscape quilting all those techniques that we that we can learn from different um, people and artists and quilters but then she's taken this idea because it is an art quilt that um, she was going to hang she has added florals around in in grasses and things like that or found napkins that already had like this that had you know some possible you know graphics of you know grass or leaves or things like that and added it to enhance the quilt once she was done and she had done the work on it so there's you know there's all kinds of napkins that one can find that have these very fun and tissue paper is another one where you can find these great motifs and even for Christmas just to add to the front you could even do that on the front of a card um, to send it out and this one is um, you know a, a Christmas napkin um, but how fun would that be to start with that and work at something um, on that and so there's there's all kinds of different kinds of napkins motifs this is one you can see that I've torn and used quite a bit um, and here it would be right side up and the the three that you would find in your kit if this is something you would like to try and purchase that kit from the quilt show you would have um, just a fun single singular motif like this to play with and give it a try and come up with your own original piece um, for a project or something so that's just another fun little thing while we're waiting so that we can get all the kits for the um, my flower garden quilt and again your background doesn't necessarily need to be the red it could be any color of preference 
if you if you're not um, a red person I am and I think that's why this this quilt just grabbed my attention and all the happy flowers on it just it was a happy quilt it makes you smile so this is what we're going to be starting next week and we'll start with the first section and the piecing of three of the blocks and then we will move from that I will go into a couple of different ways that I do raw edge applique and how I do uh, turned applique and I'll give you different options there of course you can use whatever is best for you that you like and that you find success with but I'll give you the things that I do and we'll get started on this very very happy um, wonderful red quilt and so I know a few people have texted and, and emailed me and said they're doing a purple background some are doing a white background with brighter colors in here and um, keeping keeping the flowers the same and again these flowers she in the pattern gives all the go to um, the uh, go um, cut dies and so she gives you the numbers of those so that, that you can cut them easily um, from the die cuts. So all of that will make for a very fun, um, happy few weeks this summer. And so the kits are all being sent out and gotten ready so that we're ready to go on next Saturday and get started on this quilt, which I'm very excited about. And hopefully you are too. And that today's project was just a fun little interlude and it's something else that you can use and certainly this is an easy project you could do with your children or grandchildren and um, just a fun get together and, and play with that. So have a wonderful week. I know I am. This has been an exciting week in my household because I became a grandma again this week to a beautiful, beautiful little girl. So I'm excited over the moon about that and um, have a great week and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.